Hello, people of the internet. It's Jan Peter, and I'm back uh, in the new lab. And as you can see, um, it's taking shape slowly. There is um, a lot more tools than last time. And I also um, set up the soldering station. And um, in the front here, you might recognize the Commodore 64. This is the one, that my day-to-day -day, um, use machine. I know I made these videos about the Aldi Commodore 64, but somehow this one is still my preferred um, thing to use. It's the one I modded with the um, four uh, kernels, with the um, kernel switcher by BWAG. I'm gonna link in that video here, it's quite interesting. Um, I made a lot of mistakes while building this, but um, managed to do so in the end and it's a very um, handy device and I have four different uh, kernels on one EEPROM that is built in here, you're gonna see. Um, what I'm going to do today is something that I didn't do before. I did a lot of mods on this and um, changed all the capacitors and put heat sinks on the um, ICs that are getting hot. And what I didn't do is um, replace the voltage regulators in this. Um, in these old Commodore 64s there are two voltage regulators uh, that are basically providing the power for the VIC-2 um, video chip. And uh, by using linear voltage regulators, uh, 7805 and 7812, uh, they are providing very clean uh, 12 volts and 5 volts DC to the VIC-2 chip. But these voltage regulators, these old school 7805 and 78XX uh, voltage regulators, have uh, some benefits. The, most, the main benefit being that they provide very clean and linear voltage. And uh, the major point of concern is that they are not very efficient, meaning that they get pretty hot in use and um, they might fail as a result. They don't fail that often, but um, prolonged use and they are they are um, integrated circuits, so they are getting hot and uh, they are more prone to failure because they are constantly running hot. Um, so what I did on, on other Commodore 64s is put in um, similar voltage regulators, linear voltage regulators that are, have a higher amperage rating or um, are just newer uh, voltage regulators, so they're probably gonna last another couple of decades. But they have the still, still have the same problem of inefficiency, so they draw more current than they have to and uh, get hotter than they have to. So what I'm going to do now is to open this Commodore 64 and show you the um, voltage regulators in situ. So it's actually the first time I really opened something on this bench, so <coughs> bear with me. It's not, good. it's not quite as chaotic as the old bench yet, but uh, we're pretty close already. So um, let me open this. Now this, on my daily use, Commodore 64, the middle screw is missing. Usually you have three screws, uh, this one only has two. From the beginning. <laughs> this actually came from, this is a trash picked Commodore 64 and all I had uh, to fix was the PLA, which is a pretty common fault. So it was actually, it was, I think the first or the second Commodore 64 I ever fixed. Um, so it's pretty. It's something pretty special for me. And there's our little uh, nice little mod that I made, and all the heat sinks and stuff like that. And uh, some of the chips are socketed. Uh, so, and what we are concerned with are these little fellas here. So here's the 7805 um, that provides five volts, and the 7812, uh, which provides twelve volts. So the 5 volts and the 12 volts are used for the VIC-2 chip. And I think the 12 volts are also used to power the SID chip. The old model uses um, 12 volts input. 
the newer versions use only 9 volts and 5 volts. So what I'm going to do today is to replace these um, voltage regulators with a more modern DC to DC converters that look like this. These are um, drop-in replacements for the uh, voltage regulators and these are Recom brand. I don't know if you can see it. Recom. Yeah, you can read it pretty nicely now. Uh, Recom. These are pretty expensive. I think um, the bigger one cost 14 euros or something like that and the smaller one uh, cost around 10 euros or 12 euros. It was hilariously expensive stuff. These are um, top of the line DC to DC converters. Um, I think nearly the best you can get uh, at the moment. Uh, that have the same form factor and the same pinout um, like these. So I'm going to try to replace these with uh, the new DC to DC converters which have the benefit of being very efficient and uh, running very cool. They may have uh, the downside that they might produce some high frequency ripple um, because the switching regulators um, work on pretty high frequencies so uh, yeah what I'm going to do is to put them in there and try and see if the um, picture quality from this Commodore 64 gets any worse or maybe it even gets better I don't know and I'm also gonna put um, an oscilloscope probe on the output pins of these and then on the output pins of the um, DC to DC converters to see if there's um, there maybe is ripple that um, doesn't have any effect on the rest of the circuit. But these should be pretty good and they should, in theory, at least in theory, produce very, very little um, noise because, yeah, they are, as I said, they are pretty much top of the line. So, um, yeah, let's set up the desoldering station and uh, get to work. Mm. The first step, obviously, um, is to check uh, the picture quality and the output with the old uh, voltage regulators in place. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect this up to the famous or infamous uh, LIPS monitor that I have here and give it a little test run. Okay, so it still works. Here's the picture quality from the old voltage regulators. So this is going via an S-video cable and uh, as you can see it looks pretty clean. Actually the camera makes it look cleaner than in reality. There are some uh, vertical stripes. Um, I don't know if you can see it at, at all. Uh, yeah, but otherwise picture quality is pretty damn good so um, that's the picture with the old regulators let's connect the scope so I've connected my scope probe uh, to the output pin which is the rightmost pin on these uh, regulators um, this is the input ground output so and here's our scope uh, on the output pin of the 5 volt regulator I'm turning it on and it's 5 volts. It's I think it's 2 volts per division, so it's um, two and a half. It's as I would have expected, it's very clean 5 volts DC. Let's see for the 12 volts regulator. So connected to the 12 volts regulator, let's see what we get. And of course it's out of bounds here, so that's our 12 volts. And it's also very very clean as expected so that's what you get from linear voltage regulators and you really it really looks like this it's just a straight line DC voltage very clean um, so let's desolder these and put in the new regulators and then see if the output changes So some people told me they missed my uh, desoldering gun 
in uh, the sped up video. So, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna desolder the voltage regulators quickly and speed up the video. Enjoy! <laughs> oh, and I'm using a bit of flux for this purpose so it is easier to desolder this stuff. So I'm wiggling the pins slightly. Can't see anything, of course. Wiggling the pins to make sure they are loose. And if they are ever so slightly still attached, in this case, you can wiggle them a bit. And you are going to feel when they are really, really loose. So sometimes they just stick a bit on the solder. Okay, this is completely loose. This is loose, this is loose, okay. Should be easy to remove now. So this one should just come out. Yes. This is a 12 volt one. And this is the 5 volts one. We're not, not going to need the um, heat sink anymore after put in the new one. So that has to go. So I have to use the little uh, trickery. <laughs> it's nuts and bolts. <laughs> and the nut is glued. So it doesn't accidentally come loose. Yeah, there we go. It gave in eventually. <laughs> So here's my beloved uh, isopropanol alcohol bag. I put in a little um, spray can. Aside. And see all the glue residue, the red glue residue there. <laughs> Pretty nasty stuff. So this is the 5 volts regulator and should go in there just like the old one, just like this I guess. We can probably, yeah, we can flip it over just like the old one. Which is probably a good idea. To make it fit nicely, yes. Okay, let's fire up the soldering iron. So I'm using a little old little trick I learned on YouTube. I'm using some tape to fix my components to the board. That's better. Um, the other one is the 12 volt one. It should go like so, I guess. This is pin one. Yeah. This is pin one and this one. So we can't flip this over because the legs are in the wrong position, but it's gonna work. It's not that high. So let's get a bit of a soldering montage going. <laughs> Hope my soldering iron still works. It's the first time. Yeah. I uh, actually use it after moving to the new flat and the new room and stuff like that. So, hmm. I actually missed the smell. <laughs> I know it might be a bit sick, but uh, nothing like solar in the morning or in the evening. As it is now. And I hope the pinout really is the same. Said so in the data sheets, so it should just work. So there we go. That's uh, the operation so far. Yeah. So they're definitely in there. So I don't know about you, but I have kind of mixed feelings about this because I modded. A perfectly working uh, Commodore 64, which is uh, my main machine, 
with uh, something I haven't tried before. Um, I know there are people who tried this and it works fine, usually. But, uh, yeah, you probably get my drift here. So, um, please, all of you, cross your fingers at home and uh, turn this on. Let's see if anything explodes or something like that. No, nothing exploded. And we have a nice clean picture. So far, so good. Oh, okay, that's kind of a relief. Let's have a look at the picture. So, and as far as I can tell, it looks absolutely the same. Absolutely a uh, brilliant picture, or at least brilliant in terms of a um, 1980s uh, home computer. So yeah, here we are. And uh, looks absolutely identical. Pretty nice. So I'd call this a uh, success, I think. Let's have a look at the oscilloscope, I guess. Which isn't quite as easy as with the um, old regulators, because you can't reach the pins as nicely. But we'll try anyway. This should be pin 3 of the 12 volts. Let's turn it on. Yep, it looks pretty 12 volty to me. And the other one should be 5 volts. Be this one here. Yeah. And they look very, very clean. Yeah, very straight signals. So that's the, these um, DC to DC converters are really good quality. Yeah, so that seems to have worked nicely. Let's check the actual voltages, I guess. Ground. That's 5 volts. That should be 12 volts. Yes. And we're pretty much spot on. Of course, obviously. Otherwise, the Commodore 64 wouldn't work or wouldn't produce a picture. Which it does. So, yeah, all hunky dory it seems. Nice! That was kind of easy. Let's put it back together, I guess, and see if uh, the sit sounds nicely and stuff like that. Oh, I got this, which is a 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus. Um, I am going to make a video about this thing, which is a thing of beauty, and um, I highly recommend getting one, although it is really, really expensive. Um, I got quite some Patreon money before uh, I did the break, so I bought this um, to show you on the channel, and to have it, of course, obviously. Um, it's... In my opinion, it's the best um, newly made peripheral for the Commodore 64. So, um, yeah, I am going to cover this in a video. Uh, Miss Matt Lemon did a very comprehensive video series that I am going to link in the corner um, for you to enjoy. She got one at approximately the same time that I got one because they go out in batches. And, um, yeah, I think it seems we ordered uh, this for the same batch. And... Um, she made a very nice uh, video series about all the aspects of this device, which are many. And um, yeah, check that out. I highly recommend her chan uh, channel anyway. Um, she's a very sympathetic person and she has a lot of experience with the, especially with the Amiga. And uh, yeah, she's pretty, she's a nice person. So check, her, check out her channel and um, give the retro community some love. <laughs> Let's hear some, some sit music, and um, what I like to do to test this is the game I played most as a kid, I guess, and that's Joanna Sisters. Um, so, go and check that for uh, testing the music.
That sounds fine to me. Let's get in game. It seems like everything works just as on a normal Commodore 64. Except for this is now drawing less current and uh, puts less stress on things like the bridge rectifier that's in there and uh, the PSU in the end. So the power supplier gets less stressed, which is a good thing. And the machine as a whole runs a lot cooler now. So yeah, I'm going to play uh, some more little games. <laughs> well, this is all muscle memory, I guess. I played this a lot and uh, seems to be one of the only games I can play while I'm talking. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna link in some of the stuff below, I mentioned here in the description. Make sure to give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, subscribe to my channel maybe if you haven't done so. Check out my Patreon page, which I will link in here, uh, which is a nice way of supporting me and making things like this possible. And yeah, basically, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh, bye. Wow, and it runs a lot cooler. You could feel the heat um, under here from the from the bottom side where the voltage regulator was. Uh, now it's it's cold. It's pretty much room temperature, which is pretty nice. So this is going to um, make this live even longer, hopefully.